What up, folks? It's Becky here, and welcome to Mr. Alex Tech. What up, folks? It's Becky here, welcome to Mr. Alex Tech. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Thanks for the introduction. It's okay. This is Becky, my wife. I've asked her to join for this quick beginning of the video because we just want to say a real quick thank you for all the donations for the Magic Animate tool. They're still coming in. It's been up for like a week now. It's made like three grand is on the on my Just Giving page already and it's still coming in. There's at least another grand or so to go on there. So yeah, it's done really, really well. So thank you very much. I brought Becky on because Becky's the reason that I'm raising money for Copperfield for the Breast Cancer Charity. It's a charity that Becky's been involved with for four years. Nearly five years. Nearly five years. So I thought I'd get her to come on and really quickly just tell you a little bit about it. Yeah, so Copperville is a breast cancer awareness charity that was set up 11 or 12 years ago by a lady called Chris Halenga. They're a little bit different, so they are aimed at educating particularly young people um, about being breast aware and knowing the signs, um, what to look out for, and being sort of, I suppose, confident in challenging your doctor to get it looked at. Now, I know most of my audience are men, but men can get breast cancer too. It's a small number, it's like 1%, but it is worth mentioning to make sure everyone's aware. And of course, all of us generally have women in our lives anyway. So yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, the rest of this video, there's been some questions. So I'm going to answer some of your questions about the Magic Animate tool. And Becky's going to go watch Wimbledon. I am. Thank you. Cool. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. I'm going to start off with the question or comment I probably received the most in the comment section. Why is it free? Why, 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 why are you giving it away for free and not trying to make a ton of money selling it for X amount? And it's simple, really. There's two reasons. One's a bit more philosophical and the second reason is a bit more pragmatic. So let's start off with the more philosophical one because I think that's probably the most important. And I'm calling this empowering creative freedom. Now, I didn't make that up, totally ripped it off. It's something that Grant Petty said, he's the CEO of Blackmagic. He said it in a recent interview with Forbes. It's like a seven or eight minute interview. It's really, really good, so it's well worth checking out. I've linked it down in the description below. Talking about DaVinci Resolve, if we made it for free, everyone could download it and use it, which would create a large market, and then a proportion of those customers would then buy it. Simple, right? They give it out for free so that loads of people use it and then those that become successful will buy it and give some money back. Now, I didn't know about this interview at the time. It was only a recent one. But way back when, when I started creating my assets and giving them out for free, like my transitions pack for DaVinci Resolve 16, I just followed Blackmagic's principle. That's I looked at what they were doing, just tried to apply the same thing. So I made a transitions pack and I gave it out for free. But on this pay what you like model. So those that wanted it for free can have it for free. And those that want a tip or give a little bit of money for it, they can do. So I still make a bit of money on the back end, but everyone has access to it. So everyone can do fun stuff and mess around with transitions and all that sort of thing. So that's really, really cool. And I've just continued applying the same principle. I have tried selling things. I sold a couple of transitions packs for like three quid. I still kept them really cheap, but I tried that model and I just didn't like it. I wanted to give that out for free so everyone has access to it. And again, apply the principle that those that can or those that want to tip me a little bit of cash for it, they can do. So I still make a bit of money, but I get to give it out so everyone can use it for free. And then on top of that, I like to think that my little free transitions or my little free asset packs are helping, even in a very tiny way, to grow DaVinci Resolve, to grow the DaVinci Resolve user base and that has other repercussions so the bigger the user base the bigger the community the bigger the audience the more people there are going on youtube looking for tutorials finding mine and other davinci resolve creators videos so i can continue giving things out for free i get paid by those that can there are more people that are coming to my youtube to actually watch me so i make more money on adsense and I potentially get some more money from sponsors. And the same can be said for everyone else doing DaVinci Resolve tutorials on YouTube. It just grows everything. So, yeah. And talking of sponsors, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Now, of course, I love YouTube, but sometimes it's great to go through an entire course from start 
to finish. And that's where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is totally ad free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring your new skills. There's new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. And the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. I'm currently taking the Productivity Masterclass Principles and Tools to Boost Your Productivity by Ali Abdal. Because running this YouTube as well as juggling everything else that I have on, it's really hard work. So I'm trying to make sure I'm as productive as I can be and making the most of any free time that I do have. So if you're interested in checking out Skillshare for yourself, check the link down in the description below. The first 1000 people to give it a click will get a free one month trial. So check it out. And then reason number two, the slightly more pragmatic reason, is there's less obligation to support something if you give it out for free. Again, I just stole Blackmagic's reasoning for this. When you're using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you don't have access to that support desk. You can't log a call with Blackmagic when you're using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. When you're using the studio version, you can. You have access to that support desk, which again, makes total sense. And the same thing applies for my stuff. Essentially, if I give things out for free, there's less obligation for me to support them. Now, obviously that doesn't mean I don't. I try my best in the comments. I try to get back to any emails, that sort of stuff. But I run this YouTube almost entirely on my own. Becky helps with some emails here and there, but generally everything's me. I still work a full-time job. I try and maintain a social life. I've got other hobbies, seeing friends and family and that sort of stuff. So I just can't be a 24 seven help desk for the stuff that I give out. If I'm gonna charge people loads of money for stuff, I want to be in a position to support it in the very best way. And I'm just not in that position. So if I give things out for free, there's less obligation on me. And generally people understand that. If they haven't paid for anything, they may email me a question, but they'll know it may take a little bit of time to get back to them. Whereas if you've paid a load of money and it doesn't work, it's really, really annoying when they don't get back to you. And you haven't paid the money, a little bit less so. So philosophical reason, pragmatic reason. There you go. Right, now we've got a couple of the most common other questions that people ask in terms of how to use it. So a little bit of troubleshooting here. The first one, lots of people ask, how do you copy the attributes? So if you've applied Magic Animate to one thing, can you copy it to other stuff on your timeline? And you can. So let me show you how real quick. So here on the timeline, I've got this first clip here and we've got like an in and out and all that sort of stuff. Inspector effects, I've got my controls in here. Quick tip, someone asked this, the pull scale, I didn't mention it in the other video, can go to negative numbers. So if you want it to sort of bounce in rather than bouncing sort of outwards, just make that a negative number. It's an, just a random quick tip. There you go. Now, if I want to copy that to this one, which doesn't currently have anything applied, all you need to do, give this one a click on the timeline, hit Control and C on your keyboard to do a copy, go to the next one, so the ones you want to paste to, and you want to hit Alt and V, which will open this paste attributes box. In the video attributes, you just need to tick this fusion effects and then hit apply. You see, I've got my little stars down here, which means fusion has been applied. If we now go to inspector effects, we have all of the same options now on this second clip, like so. So you can just copy and paste your magic animate to whatever you need on the timeline. Super simple, quick and easy. Next one, someone asked, can you save presets? So is there an easy way to save some presets that you've made in Magic Animate so that you can use them in other projects? And the answer is yes, it's a bit of a workaround, but it does essentially work and that's using power bins. So we're back here with this clip here, which has got our Magic Animate on it. Now you can't put things like clips within the power bin because, let me show you, if I pop that in here and then grab it back out, it loses the fusion effects. I don't know whether that's a bug. It may just be in DaVinci Resolve 18. I don't know, but it seems to lose it. So what you want to do, I've got this clip here, which has got my magic animate on it with all the changes that I've made. And I want to make this a preset. You need to use our favorite thing, an adjustment clip. So in the effects library, just under effects, we've got an adjustment clip. I'm gonna put that over the top like so. I'm gonna do the same trick we just did. Control and C, Alt and V, fusion effects and we're gonna paste the Magic Animate to this adjustment clip. Then we can put the adjustment clip within a power bin. If you've never used power bins before, simply click on view at the top, make sure your power bins are ticked, like mine are here. Within your media pool, you have power bins, and this bin will be accessible from every project that you open. So I've got this adjustment clip. In the inspect, I'm gonna to go to file, and I'm just gonna give this a name. You should always name these so it becomes less confusing. I'm just gonna call this Pulse, whatever, something like that. And then I can pop this into my power bin. 
delete it off my timeline, grab that adjustment clip off. You can see it's still got the little stars, so it does have the magic animate on there. Now I can either just leave that on top of the clip that I want and it will work, or I can then copy the effects from this one, Alt and V, paste them onto this one, that'll paste the magic anime onto here, and then job done, we can just delete that, but Paul stays within our power bin for whenever we want to use it. It's a bit of a fudge, but it kind of works. I'll have a look to see if there's any better implementations we can do for the next version of magic anime, but for now, that's your best bet. Now the third thing, a few people ask this, Keyframing. Can you keyframe some of the main attributes within there? And you can, but again, I think there's a bit of a bug. Either I'm doing something wrong and I don't know what, or there's just a bit of a bug in DaVinci Resolve, but there is a workaround. So yeah, here it is. So this has got our magic anime applied, and we're talking about all the attributes at the top here, like pitch and yaw and whatever else. So let's just put my playhead at the beginning, or we'll hit the keyframe on angle, go to the end, change the angle. You can see it doesn't actually keyframe it. It doesn't work for some reason. Again, don't know why. We're going to reset that. For some reason, it does work in Fusion. So if you click this little icon here, this little magic wand, this will open it up within Fusion. We're going to click on our magic animate. We've got all of our controls within here, so it looks exactly the same. It's no more difficult to use. We're going to go to the beginning, on the angle, keyframe, move forwards, angle. Let's just go with 360. And now it's keyframed and it works. And then we can go back to the edit page, that's got a little twirly dirty in there. We can turn a mid animation pulse on. It'll whip in, it'll pulse, and it's got that keyframe that we've added. So if you want to do that, you can, but for some reason, you need to hop into Fusion to do it. Don't know why that is. If you know, make sure to let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll fix it. What's next for Magic Animate? Well, I'm gonna keep reiterating it, upgrading it. I've got some ideas. Some people are giving me some comments for some stuff to add on to it. So I have got some thoughts and plans and whatever. If you've got any other thoughts, any things you'd like to see in it, let me know down in the comment section below. So we are going to continue to upgrade it as we go. The thing I want to do first though, if you didn't know, you can use the Magic Animate within Fusion currently. You just need to go to the right folder. It's on screen now, I can't remember off the top of my head. You open it up and you can drag it onto your nodes and use it in the same way that you would any other node. But it's a bit cumbersome. There's too much in there really to be using it within Fusion. So I want to do a Fusion version. I want to strip most of the stuff out and just give you access to the back end, to the expressions, to the curves, to the tools. So then you can just use the animation bits. So anything that you're making in Fusion, if you don't want to keyframe it yourself, you can just point things to this new Magic Animate tool and it will do the animation for you. So that's the next plan. It shouldn't take me too long, but I haven't actually started it at all. So it'll be a few weeks yet. That's the next thing I want to create, the Fusion version of Magic Animate. Hmm. How does it work? Few people ask me this, and I'm not gonna tell you. Not in this video anyway, because it needs its own video, but I'm gonna create that next week. So make sure to stick around on the channel. I'm not gonna go through every single detail, but I'm gonna show you the core, the secret source, the thing that makes it work. I'm gonna make a dedicated video on that, so make sure to stick around for that. But anyway, that's enough for this one. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Just give me a second. Do you want me to leave? No.